much. Um, good morning, everybody. You're all very welcome. Um, it's great to see or see that that so many of you have have tuned in uh, this morning. Um, so, as Margaret says, my name is Emer Sheeran, and I'm the mature student officer. I'm based in the Maynooth uh, Access Program um, in Maynooth University, and in the Access Program, um, Maynooth Access Program Map, we're called. And um, we look after um, students coming through the various alternative routes into a university. So, people coming through the mature student entry route the Disability Access Route to Education, the HERE Route, H-E-A, or the Higher Education Access Route, and people coming in through the Further Education Route with their QQI uh, qualifications. So we both encourage um, people to, to, to um, come to Maynooth, and then we provide supports for them when they're here. Um, some of you here today may have made your application for this year. You're in the system. You're, you're going through um, the selection processes that we use and then other people might have uh, apply uh, might be thinking of applying in in future years maybe for entry 2022 so I'm trying to I'm kind of covering both sides how, how you go about applying what we're looking for um, and how we select mature students and I'll also talk about the support so so um, we'll, we'll get all that done in in just uh, 20 minutes or so. And as Margaret says, you can um, pop in questions in the, the, uh, the Q&A uh, part there on Zoom. And we will try and answer as much of those as, as possible. Um, my email is there on that screen at the, the bottom left. Um, so if you uh, want to, to send me an email uh, directly at any stage, that's, that's fine. I'll, I'll look forward to hearing from you. OK, so just a little bit about what I'm talking about. I'm going to talk about um, mature students and their, their value um, to Maynooth. Um, I'm going to, and their motivations for getting here, I'll talk a little bit about the application and selection process. I'm really talking about the full-time uh, degree courses. I think we may have a session on the part-time um, uh, courses on offer in the university uh, today. It's certainly be one of the, 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 the pre-recorded presentations that you'll find when you, when you go onto the link for this open day. So I'll talk about how you apply, how we select mature students and what to expect at the interview and the entrance uh, tests that we use. Um, I'll talk about some of the preparatory courses that we have on offer for people who've been out of education for some time. Um, and I'll just give a brief outline of the unique supports that we offer both potential and registered mature students. So people before they come for, for students before they come to college, when they're just thinking about it and the supports after they've uh, become a registered student. And I'll put up my contact details at the end as well um, and encourage people to, to contact us. So I suppose um, in relation to mature students, Maynooth, Maynooth is one of the most diverse uh, student groups in uh, the, the country and the university attracts people from all backgrounds. So it is a, a very um, diverse and vibrant, there is a very diverse and vibrant mature student uh, population. Um, it also sees itself, and I think generally in, in, in the country that pe people see Maynooth as the lead institution in terms of supporting uh, mature students and very much contributes to the increased participation of mature students generally within higher education. We also have one of the oldest adult learning uh, uh, departments um, in the country and, and that is this really strong philosophy um, of learning that, that values um, the role that, that mature students have in, in shaping the university. We are uh, very motivated. We, we find that the students, the lecturers tell us all the time that the mature students particular, particularly are extremely motivated and very, very committed to their studies. Um, and I think um, mature students tend to bring, you know, they're coming from all different backgrounds. They may have raised a family or worked for years or um, done some traveling um, and they, they, they're, they're, they're bringing those kind of life experiences um, with them into the lectures and the seminars and tutorials um, and really enriching uh, those for, for, for the class generally and for the lectures and the tutors and that, this is what the tutors tell us all the time. And mature students as well tend to do very well academically. We've recently um, uh, conducted a little piece of research on, on how mature students do and they we found that they were overly represented in the higher um, grades at the end of their, their year, the, the two ones and the, the first um, as, as grades that they got at the end of their degree programmes. 
Uh, we, um, in Maynooth, we pl places are reserved on every single degree program for mature applicants. Um, we have a very strong set of uh, supports specifically for mature students. Currently, there are about 600 mature students studying with us across all um, the full-time degree programs. Uh, as I say, mature students do very, very well academically. And mature students also participate in all aspects of college life. They're, they're members of the Mature S Student Society. They work as ambassadors for many of our events, our, our open days, our um, you know, shadowing programs and other celebratory events in, in, in the university. Um, many of the mature students um, study abroad as part of their degree course, take, take a year or a semester to, to study in, in a university um, outside of Ireland. And many uh, mature students are also involved in work experience as part of their degree programme. Um, and also many of our mature students go on to further study or employment follow, following their degree course. We recently asked and uh, did a little survey on our mature students on, on, on their reasons for going to college. And I think um, this might resonate. Some of these might resonate with some of the people here today. Um, so many tell us that they just didn't have the opportunity to continue education when they were younger. They might have had to um, go out and uh, find a job or contribute to the family uh, uh, financial um circumstances and they are they might have just um the family mightn't have had, had the money to, to help them go to college or um it just wasn't expected that they would go on to college other people um said they came back because they 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 felt they were in a dead-end job or just didn't like what <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> what they were doing and uh, wanted to change in career um and you know uh, maybe needed qualifications to improve their their job prospects and other people just kind of said that they 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 had a kind of passionate interest in something like his English or history or biology all their lives and they wanted to study it on a, on a more um, formal manner. And then other people just found the opportunity presented itself to them, you know, that that, that their family have been reared and, and gone um, or that they have um, retired in, in recent years and now want to, to go into um, full time study. So. Um, just in terms of the um, application process, so mature students, um, as I say, can apply for all of our, our programmes. Um, now, the, all of the, the degrees are represented here um, during this open day, so I'm not going to go into any detail here, but just to let you know that you can apply for any programme. We have two very broad based degrees, our Bachelor of Arts and our Bachelor of Science. There's loads of subjects to choose from. And then we have much more specialised uh, degree courses in, in various areas, business, economics, psychology, social science, media, community and youth work, law, computer science, education, electronic engineering, and various specialised science degrees. So as I say, the, 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 there'll be um, presentations, recorded presentations on all of these uh, throughout the open day. And there's also um, scheduled talks on the degrees, I think, at 11 o'clock. Um, OK, so um, mature students can apply through the CAO by the 1st of February. Um, uh, they must apply to the CAO by the 1st of February. Um, they uh, can do this online. It's, it's the easiest way to do it. You can do it on paper as well. We do have late applications for some courses. So even now, um, if people are, haven't made an application yet, um, some of our courses are still, um, uh, it's still possible to apply, such as the Bachelor of Arts degree, but that's only up until the 1st of May. Um, so you can go onto our um, website and you'll see which courses are still open for application. Uh, many of our courses are closed at, at this stage. And um, it's very important, um, whether you're applying this year or in, in years to come, that you complete your CAO application thoroughly and make sure that you, you know, the, um, that you pay attention to providing uh, documentation, supported documentation, such as your exam, any exam results, anything that you're currently doing. Um, and personal statement is a, is a very important part of the CAO application. Any um, documentation that you want, to, you, you, that you're sending in support of your application has to be sent directly to the CAO. So um, in terms of selecting, there's different selection procedures depending on what degree you're applying for. So some of you might already be, as I said earlier, might be already in the process of, of going through one of these selection processes. So for some of these courses, just interview the BA um, and the product design 
Um, and within that interview, um, you get the opportunity to tell us about your achievement um, and ask questions. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we use the interview to provide very tailored advice and guidance to each candidate, whether it's about um, their subject choice or about finance and funding, you know, some of the more practical aspects of going to college. Or, you know, if you, if you need to do some kind of preparatory course, we give you advice on, on what to do there as well. Um, in the other uh, selection process that we use here will be written assessment. So many of our more specialised degree courses would um, require the applicant to do a written assessment. So they've mostly taken place this year. Um, and after this, a short list is uh, compiled for interview. So that will be for our specialised degrees and all of our science degrees. And these are not these tests are not an aptitude test and um, they're, they're generally, you know, um, want to find out what your, what your particular interest in that degree that you're applying for it, um, is and, uh, you know, what, why, why, you're, why you're choosing to study it. So they usually require a, an essay type answer, so it's not an aptitude test. Um, there's a, there is a mathematics test for, um, as part of the written assessment for all of our science and our psychology courses. We have a mature student handbook um, and that uh, gives a lot of information about it, a lot of the stuff I'm talking about today, but it also details the selection process for every degree. Um, and you can email the access office or myself and request and um, we can post you out one of those or the, the book is available online. Um, we, we, we have slightly different selection processes this year and last year just because of COVID-19. We weren't able to meet as many people in, in person, but anybody that's in the, in the system this year has, is being communicated um, regularly to about the processes. If and when you are called for interview, um, for the, for, say for the, the BA, um, the, we, have, we have read your, your application form and your submitted documents and paid uh, close attention to your personal statement. So what we uh, concentrate then on is really your academic preparedness for entering into third level study. So your um, education to date, um, you might be currently doing some, some, some uh, studies. So we'd ask you about them and how you're, how you're getting on in them. Um, what kind of academic skills you've acquired over the years, essays, assignments, um, have you sat any exams? Mathematics only if you're going into to maths-based uh, subjects. We, um, we will ask you about, you know, what research you've done into the course that you're applying for. Have you thought about this? Do you, do you know what subjects are on offer? Um, have you, attended or tuned into any open days and, and looked at our, our literature and online. Um, and we also cover in the interview just some of the more practical aspects of going to college and just, just really to, we're not prying into people's personal um, or financial circumstances in, in talking about finance, but it's just to alert people that, you know, there's a cost to come to college and you know how the grant works or the back to education loans and, and things like that. Um, so, and we, we offer um, people a chance to ask questions. So there's different outcomes. Um, you can be made an offer. We'll await uh, your results from your current study. Um, so many people are currently doing a course when they've applied to us. So we usually ask them to send on those results. And we'll tell you very clearly um, what kind of results we're looking for. Um, some cases we might recommend a one week essay course or a maths course during the summer. These are free. Currently, they're, they, they, they're online this year because of COVID-19. Um, but generally, these are fantastic courses to help people um, make that final preparation. So we will we'll refer people, some people to these courses where required. And then in other cases, um, we would recommend if somebody's been out of education for a long time, um, we would recommend uh, some kind of preparatory course. Generally, what we're looking for from mature applicants is, as I say, evidence that you're prepared academically to take on a degree course so that you have completed education course in recent years and, um, you know, ha have, have a good set of results um, and have acquired the study skills, writing skills and, um, and looked into the, the research into the course. So I just want to talk about some of the foundation courses we have. Just very briefly, we have the Certificate in Return to Learning course prepares people for entry into the, the arts and social science programs. This is a level five on the qualifications framework. It's a part-time one-year course and it guarantees progression onto the first year of a BA um, if you get over 60% at the end of it. We have the Certificate in Science, which is level six. 
Um, so applications are still open for these preparatory courses and this prepares people for entry into science and engineering um, and also there's a, there's a new component to that on computer science. This is a full-time one-year course. It's eligible for the Back to Education Allowance and um, if you again, if you get over 60%, you're guaranteed into entry into the first year of some of the relevant degree courses. And then we have the Teaching Foundation course. So anybody interested in primary or second level teaching can, can think about this um uh, course uh, so this is a one year full time course and again it guarantees a uh, progression i'm conscious of the time so i'll just say a little bit about the support so we provide all of this um before pre entry before you come to college all advice and guidance on on the application selection everything that i'm talking about now the course is the finance um the funding options and the supports um up, up until COVID, we, we, we offered a shadowing programme, so that'll be coming in again, hopefully next year, um, where we bring people in just to experience a, the day in, a day in the life of a, of a Maynooth University student. Um, we have our unique selection process, and Maynooth's processes that I've outlined already are, are very unique um, in, in the country, in that we, we put the emphasis on, on meeting the, meeting the, the, the applicants. Um, the, we have those academic skills courses I, I mentioned with the preparatory courses I mentioned, and then we have an orientation program. So people, will, once they've been offered and accepted a place uh, just before they start uh, college, they, they'll be invited to, to a two day orientation program. And this will be this will outline how to access the supports and you'll meet all the support staff you'll meet all of the people in the access office who are who will be there to support you throughout the year um, you'll meet the the. the financial uh, budgeting advisor, um, the counselling service, the health service, all, 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 everything um, that, that's available to you as students of the university, um, and also the lectures and um, the, the, the um, many of the academic staff in, in the university. And then when you've become a registered student, we have dedicated student advisors. So within the access office, um, there are specific advisors you go to if you're mature student or you know if you uh, depending on what uh, particular route you've, you've come to the university through um, and these advisors will provide support on anything anything that's troubling a, a student so whether that is something of an academic nature something more personal or something specifically financial they can provide support um, and or refer you to 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 a more um, dedicated support office uh, we've academic advisors also these will be um specific uh, a lecture one of the lecturers in each department is giving the specific role of being the link with the access office so if you're having trouble with one of your subjects um we can you know we, we can refer you to the specific person in the department we have um supports around if anybody has any kind of um disability the support around technology this year for people who are starting in september 2021 um, we will be repeating what we did last year in, in, in COVID, um, where we, 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 we started the technology supports really in, at the end of July. So anybody getting those early round offers from the CAO will be contacted by the Access Office to, um, to be offered the opportunity to sign up for te technology support. Um, so kind of look out for that later on in the summer if you're in that um, group. Um, this student budgeting advice service provides advice on all things financial. So whether it's the SUSE grant, back to education loans, or you're just struggling day to day, um, the advice uh, service will provide, um, uh, will, will give, you, so, give you help and also can refer you to some of our funds um, that, that we have in the university and I'll talk about them now. Um, and we also have some support centres around uh, write, essay writing and mathematics. So just the financial support, these are the, the, the more national supports, the SUSE grant, so that um, covers the €3,000, which is the, the student contribution fee. Um, so it's a, it's um, I'll, I'll give some maintenance as well. Um, so this is a means tested grant and it's means tested on the household income. Susie opened up for applications on the 22nd of April, just a few a couple of days ago. And um, so it's very important, even if you haven't gotten your place yet, but you think you know, you know you're hoping to come here this September, start the application process because it takes a while. It's a, it's a they're looking for a lot of information and a lot of um, documentation. So um, it's important to, 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 to get that process started. And um, the back to education loan. So if somebody's on some kind of um, social welfare payment, you might be entitled to back to education loan. So it's important to, to check that out. 
Um, we have bursaries um, that these, these are closed for this year, the 1960 bursary, but the, 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 if people are starting in, in uh, this, this um, next year, there will be another one, another set of bursaries available. They're worth 5,000 a year. There's the university scholarship, and um, that's a specific phil philanthropic uh, scholarship for mature students that might be closed for this year. But again, if you're coming in a year's time, that, that, that will be open for applications again. Um, and then, you know, some Vince de Paul and some area based partnerships have have education funds for people going back into third level who are coming from disadvantaged backgrounds. And then after you come to college, we have the Student Assistance Fund and the Student Emergency Fund. And these are really designed to help people who are struggling financially in university. And we, we constantly write out, email students regularly to, uh, to make them aware of this fund and to, to avail of the fund um, through the Student Budgeting Advice Service. The fund, the Student Assistance Fund is open all the year round um, and people can come back to it according to their needs. Our Student Budgeting Advice Service provides information on all these funds and um, there'll be a, a, a pre-recorded presentation um, on that service as part of this open day. And um, that website there at the end, studentfinance.ie is a very good source um, for all things financial. And finally, um, these are just uh, some of the, the events uh, throughout the, the, the year. So our next um, open day, which is similar to this one, will be on the 26th of June. Uh, so I just want to finally put up my contact um, details. So I'm emer.sheeran at mu.ie um, and that is the phone number. And or you can contact directly the access office is just access.office at mu.ie. OK, so, Margaret, I'm going to finish up there. And I'll stop sharing. Margaret, you're on mute if you're talking. OK, I have some text questions here, Emer, And we also had a few people had their hands up during the presentation. Oh, okay. I decided to let you go, but I will give them access to the mic now um, in a few minutes. But I'll ask you this one. The first one is from Susanna Walsh. And she says, are you referring to MSAP? In um, no, we we don't use that. That's the mature students admissions pathway, um, Susanna. So we don't use uh, the the MSAP here in in the in the university. I'm not sure if you're um, talking about the written assessments are are definitely not the, the MSAP. So that that's something that a lot of the other universities use, but we don't use it in Manu. Okay, and Claude Claude asks. I have to do an essay writing course, and if I pass, I secure my place. That's my understanding from the email. Is there any further course, or do I have to interview or anything else, or is it just the essay writing course? Um, Claude, uh, that's, yes, it, 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 it's just the essay writing course then that you have to pass. If that's what it said in the letter, you, you won't be, there won't be any further interviews or anything like that. And you'll be getting the more, more details on the essay course in the next few weeks. Okay. And Andrea asks, I was hoping to get some additional advice for the mature student interviews, as I have mine on Tuesday for the BSc in psychology, as well as what to expect with the uh, reasoning text. Okay, um, sorry, what was the name there, Andrea, was it, Andrea? Oh, um, so, uh, yeah, so the, 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 the psychology interviews are on this coming Tuesday, all right. They'll really be talking to you um, about your interest in psychology. Okay, that's, that's the most important thing for people going, that's a very specialized degree in psychology. So they, they want to know that people kind of understand a little bit, a little bit about what uh, studying psychology is about. So, uh, you know, I'd, I'd always recommend people to, to have a look at the website and, and look at what's kind of taught in Minute's psychology department. Um, the reasoning test, that's a mathematical test. I don't have an awful lot of details. I think it's kind of, there, there are multiple choice questions. I know that there might be about 10 or 12 of them and they will go from, I think, quite basic maths to, 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 to more advanced. That's all, that's all I can really tell you at the moment. Um, but um, yeah, that's, that's it. I hope, hope that answers your, your question. Okay, Andrea. Okay, if anybody wants to raise their hands now and I'll kind of 
um, I can allow you to talk if you want to ask a question. Give you access to the mic. I think I might have another question. Um, or she, it's just Andrea saying thank you. Okay. Does anyone else have a question for Emer? You can raise your hand and I'll unmute your mic. No more questions. Sorry, there is another question done in there, um, Margaret. I'm able to see them okay. now. I'm, so that's Leah. I'm wondering okay, about yeah. the interview dates and times to be given to mature to Bachelor of Education. Um, I, that's not something I know, I'm afraid, Leah. Um, I, I know, sorry, there's a Deirdre in admissions um, is organising those at the moment. I know that. Um, Margaret, you don't have any idea when those interviews I do, happening. but okay. I would say just put the question into the admissions box and uh, they'll answer it because um, if you go back onto the um, web page, they'll have, um, you know, that, that there's a, a Q&A for admissions and they'll answer it for you there. there. Yeah, I'd say it'll be coming up soon enough, Leah. Um, um, Paul, been... yeah, I can see that one there. Sorry, Margaret, couldn't have I've... brought you there. Yeah, I've been offered a part-time BA course. Would I be able to go full-time later? Yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, you can. You there is a possibility to transfer. So if you, some people, yeah, they they might be able to um, do a year part-time. It depends on the subjects, though. Um, that would be something you'd need to talk to the admissions office about as well, uh, Paul. I'm, you know, it, it it you mightn't be able to just go automatically into second year because the same degree is not offered full time as the one part time, if you know what I mean. So and it should depend on what part time um, degree. Sorry, did you say you're doing the part time BA? I think you said. Um, yeah, sorry, Paul, I, I don't want to give you the wrong information. So really, I would talk to them in, in admissions. about. Yeah, that. Paul, and usually it's a big question of transferring. So we have a designated area in um, in admissions where we deal with transfers and they look at what you've studied, they look at how it's related to um, the particular course that you're looking to transfer to and how many credits you've, you've, you've achieved to date. So there is a process there so you can um, check into that with admissions. Um, no, I don't know the answer to that. Um, Alan O'Shea, Margaret, would you know anything about the theology Alan, course? Uh, theology, Ruth Daly from the Pontifical is, is on today. There will be someone from the Pontifical University on answering questions at Open Day. So I would put that to them, um, Alan, if that's okay. But we teach philosophy in um, Maynooth University. And um, I'm not sure if it's the same one. I know theology students do take philosophy with us, um, but there's a talk on philosophy that you can just go on to the uh, open day page. You can click on the tile that says philosophy and it'll all be explained there. Great. Um, um, I'm going to talk, Nelson, about the QQI entry in a few minutes. So I'll just skip over that for now. Um, and I'll do the presentation and you can ask me questions, specific questions at the end. So we have Emma um, says, hi, Emma, regarding the essay writing course, what should I expect on completion of this? Would an interview follow? No, Emma. So no, once once you've got the essay, if you've been referred to the essay course, then all you have to do is, is sign up for the essay course and um, pass it and then you'll be given your place. Okay, and we have another question. When would you be notified if you got a place in the arts course? Okay, so <laughs> it depends. So if, if we're not looking for anything from you, either results from a current course or asking you to do the essay course or anything like that. So if, if you're, you will have been told the outcome of your BA application if you, if you made an application up until the 1st of um, February. So, so they've already been assessed. So you would have got some... Um, 
correspondence from an email from the admissions office telling you either you've got a place or referring you to the essay course or something like that. And um, if you made an application after the 1st of February, we won't be considering them until the from the 1st of May, we, we, you know, when we get the next lot of um, late applications from the CAO. But what we try and do for mature students is let people know as soon as possible that they're getting a place. Um, the official offer of a place comes through the CAO and the, the, the very first um, round of the CAO is around the fifth, the week beginning the 5th of um, July. And then there's other rounds even before the leaving cert comes out. So um, there isn't a straightforward answer to that. It just depends on where you are in terms of your application. You can, uh, you can send me in an email um, and, and I can look up your particular application um, if, if you like. Okay. okay. Um, the next question, I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer it. I think really it should probably be directed to Susie. Um, Susie have, have already told me that I do not qualify as I have a postgrad cert. Can I apply for year two or year three? Susie's support? Yeah, I think the answer will probably be no, um, unfortunately, Sharon, because um, what, because you're, you, you've a higher level of education. So it sounds like you, you have, with your postgrad, you, you, you might have a level nine um, qualification and doing a degree course, if that's what you're doing uh, this coming year, um, it's, it's a level eight. So once you have already reached um, a higher level, they won't uh, support you. Um, our student building advice service can give you more information on that, though, as well. Okay. Um, yeah, cool. So, I just, yeah, I'm just uh, conscious of the time. Um, Margaret, we're on 25 okay. to um, 11. Paul says it's a BA in social and community studies. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, I think that's to do with the, the transfer, Paul. Yes. So, again, okay. just, yes. just take the oh, same. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, Desmond, would working full time be an issue if you were to study full time? It absolutely would, I think, Desmond, and I think Emma would agree with me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, people it have to work. We, yeah, people have to work. We, we're, we're aware of that. A lot of people have, have part time jobs, but full time, absolutely not, because the, the full time study, okay, you, you won't have lectures, you know, every hour of every day during the week but it'll be spread out over the week, you know, and um, they are full-time courses and you're expected to um, attend your lectures and, you know, you, you will have, you'll have to make a full-time commitment to the study. Part-time work is, is fine, but definitely we wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to work part, uh, full-time. Uh, um, Susanna, can you transfer from, from a full-time MH107 to a part-time course? The answer is no. Um, Susanna, you can't. It is a full time course unless you can transfer in another college. Alan O'Shea says, thank you. Um, Aileen Sanders, can you stay on the BTA, BTEA after degree to do a master's or PhD? Uh, generally, I think the back to education allowance, I'm, it might finish at, at the undergrad level, but you would need to check that with the local social welfare office or again, our student budgeting advisor will be able to tell you that. That's the type of thing she would know off the top of her head very quickly. So please do um, make contact there or, you know, your local social welfare office will be able to tell you. That okay, uh, Fanula came back um, with regards to um, an earlier question and the interviews for MH001 Mature start on Zoom on the 4th of May, and it's organized through DCU. Oh, great. Okay. So that's the, the Bachelor of Education, so that's yeah. answering that question. From I'll just on. give you that quick message, last message, because we have to move on. I have done a degree course a few years ago in psychology, but just wondering if I could be able to do a post higher diploma in social studies. That shouldn't be a problem. You would just have to apply to the um, Department of Applied Social Studies. Um, you can pop that question into the admissions uh, box and they'll give you the information. Okay, thank you. And thank you, Emer. I'm just going to open my presentation now and share screen with you on, for the uh, QQI application process. Can you see that? Oh no, wait now, yes, okay. 
Can you see that, Seymour? Yeah, Margaret, I can see that. Okay, okay perfect. Yeah. Okay, so this is going to be a whistle stop through the QQI application process. Um, my name is Margaret Madden. I work in admissions, as I said earlier. I'm a schools liaison officer. And I also work on developing the links between the uh, QQI awards and the programmes in Maynooth. So um, I'm going to talk to you about um, QQI as a pathway to university. There are the three pathways um, for admission. There's the Leaving Certificate. Emer has spoken to you about the Mature Student Access Route, and I'm going to talk to you about another route, which is the QQI level five or level six route. Um, so basically, um, you'd be familiar with the framework of qualifications. I'm sure it's a framework to which all courses and learning achievements can be measured and related to each other. And usually um, leaving cert when it's higher level can be, is usually level five. You can do a PLC course, which is a QQI level five. You can also do a QQI level six, or you can do an advanced certificate in um, an institute of technology, which is also at level six. A level seven is a past degree and level eight is an honours degree. And in Maynooth, all the um, uh, degrees that we offer at, are at level eight on the framework. So you can go from your leaving certificate straight to a level eight programme in a university or in an institute of technology if you get the required points and satisfy the matriculation requirements or if all fails and it doesn't work out at the leaving certificate you can apply to do a QQI, a PLC course, a QQI level five and you can apply to university on the strength of that. I showed you the framework of qualifications which um, you'll be mostly familiar with. Um, I spoke about the uh, routes, second level, you can go straight to university or an institute of technology and do a level eight, or you can go to an institute of technology and you, you can do a level six, level seven or level eight. Um, or you can take a QQI course and a QQI course, um, a uh, PLC course is a really good plan B for leaving cert students or for students, um, you know, who might just like to take a year out and explore different interests. And you can apply to university the following year on the strength of your um, QQI course. So QQI stands for Quality and Qualifications Ireland, and they look after the um, standards of the various courses. Um, there are links from level five and level six to mo most of the courses in Maynooth University. Um, and in 2020, last year, we took 375 students purely on the strength of their PLC course. So what you will need, um, you need a full award. You have to make sure that it's a linked award. You must uh, complete a minimum of eight modules. Some courses might offer 10 modules, but you will only be scored on your best eight modules. You must achieve a minimum of five distinctions. It's a different point system to the leaving certificate. The maximum QQI points that you can get in any course is 390. And um, so you might see something that has leaving cert points of uh, say like psychology in Maynooth MH106, leaving cert points are around 500, but we will have a quota of QQI places put aside on that course, which um, students can get would say 390 points. So some specialized degrees will require mathematics like computer science, because usually, you know, mathematics looms fairly large in computer science. Also in business, uh, you will have to have, for the denominated degrees, um, you will have to have a certain maths requirement. And for science subjects, you will need maths 
and you will also need um, a course that has um, in, in QQI that is uh, science related. So there are two types of degrees in Maynooth. We have broad entry degrees that are all about choice and flexibility. We have a degree MH101 in arts and uh, we have 175 places for QQI candidates on that course. And last year, the points, the QQI points were 303. So there's a fantastic calculator on the Careers Portal website that you can access and you can um, just tick the box for distinction, distinction, merit, merit, because that's, that's how they're scored. And it'll calculate your points for you very quickly. And um, 303 points is probably about five distinctions, two merits and a pass. Um, we have a broad entry um, science degree as well. And within that, there are about eight subjects that you can choose from. You will have to take maths in first year. And we had 10 QQI places on that. And the points, the QQI points were 341. So the broad entry degrees, you pick, you, you don't pick your subject up front. You just put MH101 arts on your CAO. You come along when you get your place in September and you choose from our 34 subjects then. Then if you already know what you want to study, we have a number of uh, what we call denominated degrees. And these have their own individual CAO codes and they focus on a particular area of study. Um, so they're a direct pathway to an area such as say law or business or social science. So these are some of the courses and I have the uh, places and the number of QQI points. So the Bachelor of Social Science, if you wanted to go on to be a social worker, um, there are 20 places on that and the QQI points were 325. Media Studies, 12 places and the points were, again were 325. 325 is probably about um, six, there's different ways you can calculate the points. So it could be maybe six distinctions, a merit and two passes. Psychology then we have just three places because it's a 10% quota of places are allocated for um, QQI candidates. Um, there are There is an extra quota there for mature students as well. But uh, we only have 20 places on that um, PSI accredited course. So it went to students with eight distinctions. Now we would have had a lot of students with eight distinctions applying for psychology MH106. So it went to random selection with the CAO. So that's why that asterisk is there. So not everyone with eight distinctions would have got a place on it. So that's why I would say to you through our broad entry degrees, um, there are opportunities to, um, you know, study subjects. Psychology, you can take within arts as a double major. It's not one that's accredited by the Psychological Society, but you can do a master's afterwards um, and get the accreditation that way. So it's a good idea for a lot of the um, denominated degrees to also have arts down as well on the CAO. And then we have community and youth work. That's a restricted course, which means you have to be in the CAO system before the 1st of February. And if you just get your five distinctions and you pass the um, test, the entrance test and interview, then you would get a place. Um, there are three places on that, but we have scope to um, offer more places on on just on that course but not on all of the courses and then we have various business and accounting degrees and these are the denominated degrees these are going to you, you know, you won't get the place unless you have the maths requirement. The maths requirement can be satisfied either with the leaving cert by getting the grade in your leaving cert or getting a distinction in your um, QQI level five. So it's an 04H7 in the leaving certificate. So we have finance, international finance and economics. That was 390 um, QQI points. We have accounting and finance, business and management, 
international business and marketing. Um, we have 20 places there and it was 341 QQI points. We also have places in business and accounting and in entrepreneurship. And the business and accounting was the full eight distinctions again. It was um, 390 points. We have law degrees. Um, we don't have that many places on the uh, denominated or specialized law degrees because again, it's only a percentage. So we have three places on MH501, which is our LLB in law. And that again went to random selection because loads of students are interested in taking law. And we also have um, four places on our MH502 where you take law as a double major to degree level. And all of those courses are accredited by the Law Society. And here and in the business, I would strongly recommend that if you're applying next year or, you know, you still have, if you're applying this year, um, you still have time to um, put a, a change of mind into the CIO. Always have MH101 underneath these choices because you can end up doing the exact same degree by coming into first year MH101, passing, taking law as a double subject, taking 30 credits in law. And then once you pass at the end of the year, you can transfer into the second year of the law programs. And the same applies to a lot of our business programs as well. Now in science, with these are the denominated programs. Um, we have three places on our biotechnology course, um, and that was 341 QQI points. Um, usually there's, there's only about two um, QQI courses that qualify you to apply for science. One is the lab science and the other is uh, a nutrition uh, and science program. Um, so you have to have those specific um, courses to apply for the science degrees. But the good news is we also, um, the, those um, courses are also valid to apply for the arts programs as well and areas like business and law. So we have biotechnology, we have biological and geographical sciences. We have three places on that. We have biological and biomedical sciences. We have seven places that went at 390 points. So that was the full um, quota of points. And we also have psychology through science. And that was um, that has just two places. And that was 390 points. And we have pharmaceutical and biomedical chemistry. And that was very popular as well. That went for the um, 390 points and which is eight distinctions. And for computer science, we have five places on our computer science and software engineering, both through science and through arts and our multimedia mobile and web development. And each of them were 358 QQI points and the maths is important there. You must have your O3H7 from the leaving certificate or a distinction in a maths module um, at QQI level five. Um, we have early childhood teaching and learning. We have a full-time and a part-time option and that was 10 places and uh, 341, play, for 341 points. Um, courses with a practical element, we have robotics and intelligent devices and product design. So we had three places on each of those. Um, and again, the maths is um, important there. You have to have the maths requirement. So who provides these courses? Usually it's your local ETB, um, your local college of further education. There are 16 ETBs nationwide. Um, there's not one for every county. You would have Carla Kilkenny, you would have Kevin Monaghan. So you would talk to them maybe in the first instance and they would, um, you know, um, or, or else you could go directly to your uh, college of further education in your area, because there can be a number of different uh, centers attached to each ETB. So to apply, you to apply not through the CAO for the PLC course, you apply directly to the college or institute, institution. Um, I think Simon Harris would like to change all of that and he, you know, would like 
all these to go through the CAO in the future. There is a fee. It can vary. It depends on what kind of course, like some course might have a lot of materials, maybe if it was um, if you were doing an art, art, art portfolio course, you might have to buy a lot of materials. So the costs can vary. A lot of them are around the 200 euros mark. And QQI or PLC students can apply for the SUSE grant. So they're eligible to apply to apply for the SUSE grant. So some of the benefits, it's good preparation for third level because you learn to work on your own initiative and you're gearing up to become um, a good independent learner for when you um, get to college. There is a lot um, more support um, on QQI courses, like you will be asked, um, have you handed up your homework, etc., which won't happen at college, you won't be asked, it'll be very much down to you. Um, you learn how to research um, thoroughly and you learn how to um, write in an academic style, how to do your referencing, do your bibliography, etc. There's less exam focus on QQI courses, most of them would have, most modules would be um, at least 50% um, continuous assessment. So you're gaining your marks as you go along. And also most uh, QQI courses, they use Moodle, which is the same system that we use as uh, Maynooth. So you're coming into a Maynooth with a lot more skills um, than you would have if you were coming directly from the leaving certificates. And the nice thing is you can study areas of interest. There are about 93 different um, level five courses in areas say like media study or pre-university law or various social science courses. And there are about 115 level six courses. So there's lots of choice out there. So when you apply um, to this, third level then with your PLC course or your QQI qualification, you apply to the CAO in the normal way. You enter your PPS number, which enables the CAO to pick up your QQI results. Your offers come out in round zero, which is before the leaving search results are out. So you will know probably the first of or early, very early in August, um, whether you have succeeded in getting your um, QQI place. So just aim to do well. QQI is competitive. Um, grades are awarded on pass, merit or distinction grade. So, you know, work hard, um, do yourself justice on, on your QQI course um, and hopefully gain your place in, in um, university. And just to be aware that if you haven't met, say, the maths requirements for a particular area in the leaving certificate, make sure that you um, try to um, get a maths, get the um, maths requirements covered on your QQI course by taking a course that has the maths and that um, and and try and get a distinction in that because that is the requirement. Um, so. That's it, folks. Um, um, just to quickly show you, if I have a minute, how to find out about the courses we have. Um, I'm just trying to open our web page here to show you where you will find. If you just uh, do a quick search, um, QQI courses linked to our degrees in Maynooth, and just scroll down, you will find the various courses. And I'll just go into arts here and show you. And those are the award codes. Usually if it's level five and it's a major award, it starts with 5M, or if it's a level six major award, it'll start with um, 6M. So that's, um, you find all that information on our website. So that's it, folks. Thank you. I'll have um, to take any Margaret, questions. Yeah, there's some questions there. Do you want me to read them out? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so um, I, I know we don't have much time, so I'll go through them quickly. So David is asking, how many places are available in the Law with Business course? In the Law with Business course, David, there's just four places on the denominated degree. But if you apply for MH101 as well, 
you can take law in first year, you'd be doing exactly the same as the MH502 students. And once you pass law in first year, when you come to register for second year, you will be given an option to either stay in MH101 or transfer with your other subject into MH502 and continue to degree level. And then you have a BCL or whatever, which is an accredited degree. Okay. Okay, Margaret. Uh, Kiki says she has a VTAC level five since 2014, passed with merit. Can, can I apply for MH101 Arts? Do I apply through CAO or directly to Manu? Um, you're probably a mature student if you have it since 2014, um, Kiki. Um, you apply through the CAO, but we do like you as a mature student to have um, a, four distinctions for a mature student, whereas it's five for, um, for students coming in, the 18 to 23 year olds coming in um, through the QQI process. Um, so you might have to do something, uh, but as a mature student, maybe you would consider a return to learning or something like that. Okay, uh, Margaret, how many places on MH212? Now, these are these are uh, QQI, I suppose. Two, I mean, there's, there's extra for mature. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to have to go back a bit through the slides to kind of 212. Oh, that's the education one, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Uh, unfortunately, um, we don't have a direct link to that, but there is an option. You can apply for MH201, which is our general science degree. Do the course subjects that you want to teach. You will have to do maths anyhow. And at the end of first year, if you do well, you can apply to transfer to the MH212 in education. Okay? So that's a, it's a kind of a bit more circuitous. It's not a direct link, but we do take quite a few people um, transferring over. Yeah, actually, Sharon has come back. That same person. Um, it's mature entry. To, 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 it's too mature. Um, she's mature. Entry. Entry. Oh right, okay, Sharon. So you just apply as a mature student then, and you're interviewed, and you go through the mature process. Yeah, it's yeah. usually around ten percent as well, Sharon. It's it's hard for us to know exactly how many each year. Um, but if you're eligible, you will, you will go through that um, that process, yeah. and if if you're right for the course, you will get a place. You know, it's uh, it's 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 more your your own um, preparation. I can't give you an exact number. Apologies for that. Um, I think that's all for the moment, Margaret. Oh, sorry. Um, there's another Paul. Um, I have a level six with distinction. Is there points with this level six? Yes, um, just apply um, uh, anyhow. Um, yes, uh, make sure it's a linked, it's one we accept, which, uh, what area is it in, Paul? But anyhow, yes, you can, you can apply with that, definitely. Yeah. I just, I just suppose, I just want to stress that Margaret is talking about a specific entry route for, for QQI, which is different from what I was talking about, the mature entry route earlier on. And um, just, just th there are places held for people who are not old enough, basically over 23 to apply as a mature student. And then there's mature student places, you know what I mean? So there, there, so if you're a mature student, you can apply as a mature student and there are spaces kept, kept places kept for mature applications. And then there are a separate set of places kept for people coming um, through the QQI route. But obviously a mature student has a little bit more um, options because they can either apply as a mature student or through the QQI route as well. I hope that's um, clear. Um, I've got, Emer, sorry, have you got time just, for... Sorry, yeah, no, carry on. Emer. Sorry, Mark, have you time for another question? Yeah, yeah. So I've got my QQI level five in science and lab techniques with eight distinctions and I'm a mature okay. student. I applied biotechnology, I already did my student mature student test and I have the interview next Thursday. Will I get my place or is there a competition? Yes, um, Isambalo, I think you pronounce your name there. Uh, yes, if, if, you, if they feel that you are academically ready for that course, that you have the, the, the academic skills associated with taking biotechnology, the subjects, specific subjects and that kind of thing, then you, you, you may be offered a place or they may refer you to a, 
mathematics course, but they will they will let you know um, at the interview um, exactly what's happening. And also just to point out that if if things didn't go with the go well with the mature um, interview, you could still be picked up through the QQI process. Very good. As okay. well. Um, that's great. And then um, uh, so somebody's asking, can you go back to the computer science slide, Margaret? Yeah, Is that possible? Sure. Imer, can I just ask, did the slides show okay afterwards? Yeah, that? they did. Yeah, yeah. once you put yeah. it on that double screen thing, they showed it fine. QQI. Oh, sorry, computer science. Yeah, it's this one. Yeah. So that's uh, whoever was asking about that. That's yeah. that slide up there. Uh, Paul has come back. Paul was asking about the level six um, with distinction, and he's it's the training train the trainer uh, course he has. Oh, so uh, that's a different type of course, um, Paul. Um, it I don't think it should be a linked course. Um, it's it's. The thing to do would be go onto our website um, where I showed you under how to apply, look at the QQI level six and see if the course code is up there. You will need to know the award code because we um, um, that's that's what we accept. Everything goes on the award code. OK, um, and then here's uh, this might be from a mature student, Aileen. Can you do the prepar preparation course without a referral? Are you talking about the full year preparatory course and um, the certain science, the turn to teaching, the certificate of return to learning? You can apply for them separately. Yeah, you don't need to be referred on to them. It's, they're just preparatory courses and um, the essay courses and the maths courses during the summer. You do need to be referred on to them. I hope that answers your question, Aileen. Again, I suppose, um, Margaret, I don't know how you're tied for time, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, there may be other things going on now live that people want to, to go to. Yes, so so please be free to leave. Um, yeah. but both of us can be contacted. My, my email went up there earlier on and, and um, our admissions yeah. today. Um, mine is margaret.madden at mu.ie. OK. Any other final questions or, oh, can I apply for Susie and the BTA at the same time? Yes, so you, you, you absolutely can, but what you won't get, if, if you're eligible for Susie, um, they will pay the, the 3,000 euro, the student contribution charge, but what you won't get if you're on the back to education allowance is the maintenance, the extra bit of money that you get um, along with Susie. So you should, if you're on back to education allowance, you should absolutely apply for, to Susie to get the student contribution charge paid. Um, okay, so we'll have to, I think we'll just have to close the chat there. Um, as I say, admissions have a chat uh, function on the Open Day um, webpage, so you can just type your questions in there and they'll be answered, okay? Thank you all for attending and uh, we hope you found it useful. Thank you. Thank you.